Good morning, Namaskar, hello and welcome. My name is Bhuvan Apurvajha and you are with the Editorial Edge on the 25th of September 2023. As on the agenda today, we have three important topics like we always do. We will take a, a deep dive into understanding them as well as solving questions uh, that can potentially arise out of them. Okay. So the first topic that I have for you today is to do with, well, the Prime Minister had his monthly radio communication, uh, Man Ki Baat yesterday. And in that he spoke about a particular river and, and a process, a community-led uh, process of river rejuvenation. Okay, that was the river Soth. So we'll seek to understand what was the river Soth and how did the people of uh, that particular area in Uttar Pradesh, they went ahead and they went uh, to rejuvenate this river. What was the effort like? You know, what was the science behind the process? That's going to be number one. Number two, we'll seek to understand elephant corridors in the news again. Okay, MOEFCC has released a report recently. The number of elephant corridors in the country has increased and uh, the sub-regional breakup has been provided. So whether it is the eastern region or the northern region or the northeastern region, which has the highest number of elephant corridors, we'll seek to understand that. And then I have a very interesting discussion for you regarding, say, the uses of elephant dung. Okay. You'll find that a very uh, popular coffee bean variety, you know, one that sells for close to 13,000 rupees for 40 grams is sourced out of elephant dung. So we'll seek to understand the black coffee ivory or the black ivory coffee. Okay, that's going to be number two. Number three will be the Agumbe Rainforest Complex. Now for any of you who are from the good state of Karnataka, you will know that Agumbe ARC, the Agumbe Rainforest Complex has held a record. You know, it's known as the Cherapunji of the South. But that, that ranking is now under, under threat. Okay, so what is the reason? We'll, we'll understand that too. And then we'll take a look at the questions of the last class. Right? Okay. Alekha, revisit, Subhankar, Coder, your neighbor, Pooja, Bulbul, guys. Thank you so much for joining. Okay. I'm happy to see you all of you again. And I hope that we have many new students also who are watching us today. Okay. So let's get started. Let's not waste much time. This is where you connect with me, by the way. This is my Instagram ID. All right. This is my email ID. If you need a particular long form doubt or if you have anything, any question related to geography or environment or international relations, I can help you here. Whereas you will find the entire uh, uh, PDF of this entire lecture uploaded on this Telegram channel, say around noon, afternoon. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, Revisit. How are you? Welcome. Welcome. Right. Let's get started. River Soth. Okay. Yesterday, Sunday, Prime Minister spoke about the river rejuvenation process of River Soth in Uttar Pradesh. So first, let's understand the facts of the case. Okay. Originating from Amroha, flowing through Sambhal to Badayu, this river was once known as the life giver in this region of Uttar Pradesh. It's a tributary, obviously, of the Ganga River. Okay. Now, so what was the problem here? What eventually happened? So the river changed courses. Eventually, there was encroachment on its floodplains, on its channel. Okay. And thus, you had the river that you know was essentially the fuel of its life was sucked out of it. If there was no river channel, if there was lack of water, lack of protection, the river died, as you would expect. Okay. Now, 70 gram panchayats then together came and started the work of rejuvenation of South River. Right. So eventually, this was a community-led process. First, let's understand that. Okay. That 70 gram panchayats came together, and then with the say public works department, the irrigation department, steps were taken to save the life of the river, to get it back to life. And what was the process that was followed? So essentially, they went ahead and started from the very basics. You know, they employed the process of check dams. Now we'll understand. You know, what are check dams? How do they go ahead and help help an individual or a community bring a river back to life? What is the entire process? We'll do that in the next slide. But let's just understand the facts of the case so far. Afzal, good morning. Good morning. Okay. So thereafter, you also had thirty thousand gambusia fish. Now, you, you would know, say, Gambusia goes ahead and attacks the mosquito larvae, right? We understand that. But then you also know that Gambusia is a fish that can potentially go ahead and negatively or adversely affect the ecosystem of a lake too. Mindless application of Gambusia fish may be a problem, as we have seen, say, in Andhra Pradesh. You know, you had lakes where, say, Gambusia was introduced, which led to the decline of other fishes in that particular lake of that ecosystem, okay? Nevertheless, Gambusia was also employed here. Now, let's look at what a check dam is. A check dam is a small temporary dam constructed across a ditch waterway to counteract erosion by reducing water flow velocity. Essentially, this is what you're looking at, guys. 
Okay, let's understand how a check dam functions first. Right. So if this is your river course, or if this is your river, okay, you go ahead and construct a sort of blockade in the middle. Okay. You go ahead and construct blockages in the middle. Now what do you essentially seek to do here? Once you have constructed the water flow, this blockage has been constructed, you can understand that uh, the water flow that would have been say earlier faster, right, that is going to be now hindered. Because of that now what would you expect ideally? If your water flow earlier was say for example a kilometer per hour, okay, we are just taking a random figure, okay. Whereas after the introduction of these obstructions, now you find that say it has come down to say 0.5 kilometer per hour. Okay. Essentially what does happen then? Because of the reduced velocity, your increased siltation and percolation in the soil is observed. Right? Because you have water now that is little stagnant as opposed to free flowing. So you have the sediments now that are getting deposited. At the same time, you also have percolation of the water because it is available for a longer amount of time at a particular place. You have the percolation of water within the riverbed also, right? At the same time, what you're looking at is the sides, say side A and side B. Because your water levels are going to be present here. So, which means your erosional activity that the river exposes or uh, goes and carries forward laterally. Now, that is also going to be reduced. Yes. So, this was the primary method of the, the method that was followed by the Gram Panchayats of, uh, of Western UP where uh, South River is present. Okay. Now, so you are looking at say erosional activity that is reduced. Okay. Okay. Now, are these, what kind of material do you go ahead and choose to make your barricades? You know, understand it as a barricade. So, what kind of material do you choose? You can choose whatever material you want, right from the most locally available to the most high tech also. Okay. So, the people of South essentially went ahead, employed sandbags. Okay. You can also go ahead and have this particular obstruction that is created made of say tree logs. Okay. In fact, what you find is a particular animal in Northern America called the beaver. Yes. This is naturally responsible for going and creating such sort of check dams there. You know, it has it has its in its tendency, it's it's a part of its behavior where it goes and barricades these small streams, small rivers, through say rocks, uh, wooden logs, whatever it finds. Essentially adding to the uh, water uh, control of that area. So a beaver does it as a natural process, you know. Nature also has a way of constructing check dams. Okay. So you're looking at sandbags, you can have tree logs, you can have gravel, you can even make, make it out of rubber, okay. Whatever is locally available, go ahead, make these sort of barricades in the river channel. Once you have rainfall, you will have water collection here. Once you have water collection, rather than allowing it to freely run off, you are trying to hold it back as far as possible, so as to bring back that water channel to life. That essentially is the purpose of a check dam, okay. Let's go forward. Right. So, in addition to controlling gully erosion, the one that I told you, the lateral erosion that you find, in addition to controlling that, check dams also serve to slow the movement of water, allowing increased percolation in the soil. That your river bed that was hitherto dry, yes, now that is exposed to water. So, once it has exposed to been exposed to water, its properties change. The way that uh, river course starts to behave, that changes. You see. Which is why you will find, whenever you go to these, uh, say, areas in and around your, your uh, town or your uh, city, you know, these are the most commonly available forms of, say, uh, water conservation methods that are followed, okay. So, let's have a look. I have some few pictures for you also. But first understand, how does a check dam work? It is a pre-designed and constructed to meet the following criteria. Number one, firstly, velocity to be reduced. Okay, so that you have much more stagnant water. Okay, you are you using it to raise the bed level, reduce the slopes, which means erosional activity of the river to be reduced. Okay, you are also looking at slopes, the slope stability. Because you have erosional activity that is now reduced, your slope stability is now increased. Okay, and you promote water percolation into the soil, 
and conserve water for plant growth. Obviously, if you have this particular sort of construction that you have done, if you have water here available now, you will have life suddenly start to spring up in it. Yes, from the say primary microorganisms, you will have some sort of say birds coming or the others, amphibians being developed there. Okay, so that starts to create a local level ecosystem also. Which is why you find that check dams are of extreme relevance in so far as not just the conservation of the river, but also the river-led ecosystem that we talk about. Yes, that the river itself is a life giver. And so to make sure that the river is capable of giving a life, you create first the life of the river itself. And that is created by a check dam. Pranjul, good morning, good morning, welcome, welcome. Right. Okay. Now let's look at it. This is what I'm showing you here. So you see this obstruction? Yes. You see this obstruction? The activity of this is going to be seen around this area. Where because of the raised water level, suddenly you have that erosional activity of the river that is reduced. You realize? At the same time, you do allow for say movement of water. But this is not unhindered movement. You will have say small flaps that will stop the movement of water. Eventually the goal is to hold the water there for as long as possible. And eventually let out water at a controlled pace. Okay? So you, you can have your check dam made up of brushwood, stone, boulder, gabion, masonry, anything. Anything from say as far as simple uh, uh, rocks to say extreme high fiber materials also. Okay, rubber also is used. Right? So you can go ahead, have a look at the individual properties of this. You will find the entire uh, thing uploaded on my telegram channel. Bulbul, yes, the WhatsApp group is coming. I have had a look at your email. Kamre, good morning, good morning. So how do check dams work? Now that I've told you this, here's another thing. Now if you're looking for the purpose of the check dam as to create a good land, you know, if you're going to create a good land for planting after the rains, you go ahead and create something called a Nala Bund. What is essentially, what is essentially a Nala Bund? Look at this. If this is the whole course of the river, right? And this is the erosional activity that I'm trying to reduce from the sides, right? So what you go ahead and do is, have a look at this now. The bund will lead to flooding of the upstream area, retention of moisture and silt. The same thing. You create obstructions, barriers. Upstream, you have fl large-scale flooding that takes place, siltation that takes place. Okay. The land around that particular upstream area now becomes much more fertile. The water table is also reduced considerably. Are you able to understand this, guys? Okay, a very simple concept. But in terms of application, it is the most commonly found whenever you're looking at, say, river rejuvenation. Okay, so the stone section is to hold back the silt, creating a good area for planting. This is essentially what a Nala Bund is, right? Okay, so let's look at some questions now, guys, shall we? Yes, firstly, in terms of river Soth, since it is a, 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 a tributary of Ganga, I don't think any conversation around Soth can be complete unless and until we have discussed the Ganga, right? So you go ahead and let me know the answer to this. Okay. Identify the correct sequence. Vishnu Prayag, Nand Prayag, Karna Prayag, Rudra Prayag, Dev Prayag. Which order? Okay. Which order would be correct? You will let me know. And this is the most basic of the questions. Okay. You will find if you are unable to answer this, well, NCRT is your best friend. Okay. Let's look at question two. All right. Which of the following cities, towns do not fall on the banks of River Ganga? Now, if you have been looking at, say, the geography past year's papers, okay, especially prior to, say, 2010, 29, you find questions like these were most common. And now they are making a comeback in, in so far as these isolated questions that you find. Okay. That these questions that you will have to eventually sit down and, and see with a map. That is essentially what the commission wants you to do. Okay. So, you let me know. Mirzapur, Bhagalpur, Patna, Patna Lucknow. Which is the particular town or city that you will not find on the bank of the river Ganga. The third question that I have for you, in which state will you find check dams which are locally known as Johar? Okay. Very, very commonly, in fact, many articles are published on Johar. Okay. The efficacy of Johar. So, which state are we talking about? Okay. Is it Chhattisgarh, Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh? Right. You will let me know your answers. In fact, what you are going to do is, I have questions 1 to whatever number, n. You are going to go ahead and leave the answers for me in a linear format, in a tabular format, in the comment box. Okay. Go ahead and engage with these questions, guys. 
it will take you five minutes of research time, but it will complete the whole knowledge gap that you have for a particular topic. Okay. Meanwhile, a new batch just started on uh, the 22nd, okay, wherein we are beginning with physical geography. Earlier to that, the, uh, the other batch that I was associated with, we will be closing its physical geography by this weekend, coming weekend, right? So if, if uh, you haven't yet started for your preparations for civil services 2024, and I suggest that, well, it's high time that, that you do now because you are already entering October first week. If you do not have a plan uh, already, go ahead and engage with this. Study IQ's prelims to interview initiative offered in three languages, okay, Hindi, English, bilingual. I'm associated with English and bilingual, right? So go ahead, have a look at the course deliverables. And I can inform you one thing that, well, the core point of this course is not to say, uh, make you rote-based uh, le learner, no. The point of it is to concept, your concepts should be crystal clear, you know. Once your concepts are clear, question solving is a natural process. Yes, and that is, the, that is the method that is followed both in prelims and mains. And obviously for interviews, you are looking at expert guidance from a set of uh, uh, counsellors, our mentors, our entire uh, batch, our, our senior officers who are associated with us. Okay, so that all of that is a part of the prelims to interview initiative. Go ahead and uh, look at the course deliverables. And when you do decide to sign up, we'll use this code. Why? Because well, you get my batch, I get allotted to your batch, we start our preparation together. And more importantly, if you consider it so, you get a huge discount. All right. So go ahead, engage with this. You don't have many days to go, by the way. Okay. Let's start with elephant corridors, guys. Important topic. Down to earth, the portal from where I have uh, picked up this particular uh, uh, news for you. Okay. Garima, good morning. Welcome. Welcome. I'm most happy to see you. Thanks for joining. Okay. So down to earth is from where I have picked up this whole... Uh, article and what do you find firstly let's understand that the number of elephant corridors now have been increased in india okay that a recent report says that from 2010 when we were close to what 85 90 corridors from there we have now increased up to 150 corridors okay in terms of say our uh, uh, commitment towards elephant conservation that is of prime importance guys now one might one might be say tempted to ask why why are elephants so important for us? Okay. And, and that's a fair question to ask for the say unaware. So let me make you aware then. Why are elephants important for us? When you consider the health of the forest. Okay. And I'd use this term very carefully. An elephant, firstly, is a keystone species. Okay. It is a keystone species much like say the tiger. Almost the same. The similarities if you were to go ahead and see. Well, it is a keystone species for sure, okay? And when you consider, say, the different types of elephants, so you have, say, the Asian elephant, the African elephant, okay? Our Asian elephant is endangered, okay? But more importantly, it's relevance. Let's understand the relevance. Then I can tell you the facts of the case, if you have considered it so. So here, firstly, you're looking at Wildlife Protection Act, okay, 1972. What do you think, guys? Which schedule will it be of, uh, of in the Wildlife Protection Act? Do you think it will be in Schedule 1, Schedule 2 or Schedule 3? Huh? Schedule 1 is essentially what? It's the highest level of protection that you accord to a particular species. You know? Whereas say, the other schedules have varying levels of degree of protection to the extent that some you do not have any protection at all. But if, you, if an animal or a species is listed in Schedule 1, highest level of protection accorded. Correct? Okay. Like I told you, our Indian elephant endangered according to the IUCN list, the red list. In fact, IUCN list only. Okay. Shubhankar, yes, absolutely. Ar Aranya series is coming. I'm happy for your support. I'm very, very happy for your support. That is coming soon. Don't worry. Okay. Like I've informed you, the final modalities are in place. And after that, it's going to be a regular series. We will complete the whole uh, uh, environment series for you. You know, that is the whole idea, the whole plan. Okay, so yes, don't worry, it's coming for sure, it's coming soon. Meanwhile, just stay connected for this morning class because, well, you must have observed, Subhankar, that I do go ahead and have make it a point to include environment or agricultural related topics more in this series. Why? If you just pick up the past year's paper, you will see environment, agriculture, forest, climate change. Basic, the most number of questions get asked on this section. So as a student, it, it's much more relevant to go ahead and prepare this in, in, a, in a more holistic manner. 
But yes, Shivankar, for sure, Ananya series is coming up. Okay. So, endangered according to the IUCN list, right? In terms of the CMS, the Convention of Migratory Species. Okay, let's look at it. Convention of Migratory Species, the CMS. What do you think? Is it a part of CMS? Absolutely. Appendix 1. Again, highest level of protection. Right? You're also looking at in terms of the conservation efforts that India has for uh, elephants. Two primarily come to mind. One is Project Elephant and one is Gaji Yatra. Okay. What, the, what, the, what type of role does the elephant play now? Number one, seed dispersal, for sure. Yes, it consumes all of the fruits, the, tree, the leaves, the bark, whatever it consumes, eventually defecates at some place and you find that will elephant's digestion firstly is incomplete. Now, that's a very important for, a fact for you. Why? Because I'll tell you of a very high level of coffee beans that are found, by the way. Okay. And let me inform about that first. Firstly, seed dispersal. Why? Because eventually, elephant has incomplete digestion. Okay. Now, what happens because of this incomplete digestion? Now, here is a very important fact for you. Okay. There is something called black ivory coffee. Okay. Now, last I checked, last evening I was just going ahead and looking at the rates of this. So, I found a particular website selling 35 grams of this coffee for close to 13,000 rupees. So, you, mu what's, you must ask yourself, what is the big deal about black ivory coffee? Firstly, why does it sound so fancy? So, what happens? Here is an elephant. Okay. It goes ahead and consumes my coffee beans. Sometimes it does. Okay. Now, elephant, incomplete digestion, which means that as part of its dung, you have this coffee beans that are a part of its dung. Okay. Eventually, these coffee beans, because they have undergone extensive fermentation in the elephant's stomach, so that, uh, uh, say, that bitter taste that you get of coffee is taken away from it. Instead, a sweet taste is what is claimed to have been, say, introduced in the coffee beans now. And that particular coffee bean that is sourced from the elephant's dung is sold as black ivory coffee. Okay. So, what you find is that it's dung, in fact. Elephant's dung. Extreme importance, by the way, guys. Okay. One, obviously, is the black ivory coffee, for sure. Number two, what you find is that you have something called a dung beetle. Okay. Now, what does a dung beetle do, guys? Okay. So, here it is. The dung lies in the forest all alone. The dung beetle comes. Okay. What does a dung beetle do? It takes dung, the whole dung, breaks it down into say small, small minuscule globules, turns them into these round figures like pellets and then starts to go ahead and bury them deep into the ground. Now, what happens because of this? Can you understand that? What the role the dung beetle is playing? That because it is taking the dung away from the primary place and say burying at different different places, obviously it is rich in organic matter. Yes, it is actually what a fertilizer. So you have that kind of fertilizer that is now spread across the area, which means it gives rise to new life. Yes, it adds to the productivity of the soil around which the dung beetle operates. Right. So can someone let me know? Now my question to you would be. Under the terms of, say, environment concepts that we know, what would you classify the, the whole uh, relationship the dung beetle shares with elephant? Let me know this answer too in your comment box when you write your answers for me today. What is the relationship of the dung beetle with the elephant? Okay. Is it mutualism? Is it commensalism? The different lisms, you will let me know. Okay. This is your home, homework, by the way. Mujha What is the relationship? In terms of the environmental concepts, okay, mutualism, commensalism, is it uh, animalism, what is it exactly? Kya hai? Identify it for me. You also find that the dung is used to make paper, okay. In fact, just a little bit of dung of the elephant can give me around 115 leaves of paper a day. Do you realize? So, you don't have to go ahead and cut trees, which means in terms of the commercial applicability of dung, it's a sustainable product. Right. So, these are the lesser known ones that uh, the whole elephant dung, the role that it plays. Obviously, there are others also in terms of say, 
driving local level businesses it also acts as say fodder for all the other animals uh, of the forest okay they interact with the dung in some manner or the other and thereby improve the health of the forest okay now coming back to elephants since we are discussing elephants and elephant corridors let's understand these first so elephant corridor a strip of land that enables elephant movement between two or more friendly habitats okay so this is an elephant corridor okay this is an elephant habitat by the way and this becomes my elephant corridor so this particular land now obviously what you realize is at times it does pass through say villages forests fields roads highways okay railway tracks which is why you find that you have say in northern bengal uh, specifically in uh, mahananda wildlife sanctuary gorumara wildlife sanctuary chapramari sanctuary okay you have the northern uh, railways that operates a line up to alipurduar kuchbihar from new jalpaiguri okay now because it is passing through such pristine forest and it is a part of elephant corridor more often than not you find that there is a negative interaction of the railway and the elephants okay you'll also find videos on youtube where you find these elephants have now learned to go ahead and operate the railway uh, stoppage the railway line that you see no that stops on the highway yeah they know how to go ahead and open it and close it also because they have interacted with it over a period of years obviously at times you find the unfortunate news that many an elephant are also killed there okay which is why you find that the ir the international railways sorry indian railways does take a lot of effort you know many projects are introduced to go ahead and say protect the elephant sound a horn yes you have operation b that was also done there okay so that is one of the primary problems that elephant corridors are not exclusive to say pristine forests in fact elephant reserves also and here is a very good important concept for you elephant reserves unless specified right they will include human habitation areas okay which means what these are not exclusive to forest zones say like a tiger reserve has a core zone and a buffer zone yes elephant reserve has none of that protection so at times you will find that an elephant reserve may include a human habitable area also correct shubhankar correct jalpaiguri district okay so right now total number of corridors in india 150 which means the number of corridors is on the rise west bengal the highest number of corridors in the state in terms of the regional break up and this is where it is important for you okay many a times what you find is many a notes many a books say that uh, northeast of india has the highest number of corridors unfortunately no okay this information is from the moafcc website east central region contributed to 35% okay North East region second largest with thirty two percent, Southern India twenty one percent, and obviously Northern India was twelve percent. So in terms of which area or which region of India has the highest number of corridors, that is my East Central region, whereas that is followed by North East, then Southern India. Finally, you have Northern India. Northern India obviously has minimal number of elephant corridors. Okay, when you look at the Indian subcontinent, guys, now here is another question for you. so in the indian subcontinent which country do you not find elephants in right so for example nepal yes chetwan national park elephants found bhutan shares a boundary with uh, baksa tiger reserve and these forests jaldapada uh, goru mara all of these so you have elephant corridors that exist with bhutan also okay china has elephants absolutely sri lanka yes in fact the density of uh, elephants in sri lanka is quite high bangladesh has elephants but in terms of our western neighbors pakistan they do not have elephants okay elephants are considered to be extinct in the wild in the state of pakistan okay they do have one or two say lying around in their zoos but those are primarily say exchanged animals from say bangladesh or other countries but in terms of say wild elephants in the wild pakistan has zero none none whatsoever okay you also find state animals that elephant is included as the state animal of certain states say jharkhand comes to mind for sure Karnataka comes to mind state animal okay Odisha comes to mind state animal okay as the national animal you have laos l a o s laos for whose national animal is elephant in india's case elephant is not a national animal it's a national heritage animal okay so it was i think announced back just in 2010 or 11 as our national heritage animal so there are few facts that you need to be aware of okay 
more so say, say than the elephant corridors no where extinct where the elephant is extinct in india uh, in the indian subcontinent in the indian sub region okay and which states have it as they say state animal which country has it as its national animal which region is has the highest number of corridors okay and whether what is the protection degree that is offered to a uh, uh, an elephant reserve is it the same as say a tiger reserve now you know right okay so let's look at some of the reports of that uh, some of the observations of that report now number 1 intensity of the use of corridors has increased by 40% which means that these elephant corridors that were say earlier there you know this is an elephant corridor elephant corridor okay so what you are looking at is that this intensity the frequency by which they are passing between that corridor that has increased however there is also observations of certain corridors that have now been lost or are getting degraded obviously why is that happening you and i anthropogenic causes that say uh, environmental degradation is observed okay habitat fragmentation is being done what does habitat fragmentation mean let's look at this so if this is one corridor okay if this is one habitat one habitat one corridor habitat fragmentation means that human pressures from both sides have led to increased encroachment this road that used to be so continuous this highway elephant highway that used to be so continuous now is fragmented so suddenly you might expect say a highway passing through here okay or some sort of say a, a, a village that has been constructed agricultural fields which means the elephant is now forced to go ahead and consider going from say other routes from this way or this way increased man animal conflict is happening why because of habitat fragmentation that you are seizing the highway territory of the elephant corridor okay so you have shown a decrease in use okay decrease in corridor use why habitat fragmentation shrinkage destruction but the good news is that elephants are expanding their ranges specifically in the vidarbha region of maharashtra southern maharashtra bordering karnataka that the elephants are also now reclaiming their jungles reclaiming their space okay and so whereas you might have say certain areas that are seeing a downfall overall you find that the health of the elephants in india is on the rise okay that they are now given a, a certain degree of protection but you are also seeing that man animal conflict is on the rise because of had, habitat frag, fragmentation and say increased encroachment on this highway that the elephant uses right i hope this was a, a an eye opening discussion for you many mcqs now that can arise out of this okay so if you resonate with the way we approach concepts out here go ahead and leave me a like you know it will give me an immense boost if i see the when i see the support of my students you know it's not easy waking up in the morning every morning at 3 am but i think it's it's your appreciation that keeps me going right okay let's move forward guys let's look at some questions now shall we okay which of the following countries are elephant not found in the wild here it is go ahead and answer this question for me i think you will answer this question even in your sleep now okay china pakistan bhutan sri lanka you will let me know your answers question 5 elephant reserves in india include areas of human use and habitation black ivory coffee is made from coffee beans found in the elephant's dung dung beetles interact with elephant dung and negatively affect the forest ecosystem right let me know your answers the correct ones okay identify the correct statements and let me know your answers in the comment box this is question number 5 theek hai question 6 which state in india has elephant as their state animal jharkhand karnataka kerala odisha okay obviously multiple correct here you must have realized by now so you let me know okay which state and of, don't forget that question also what is the relationship between dung beetle what would you classify it as dung beetle and uh, elephant under the concepts that you know what is the relationship classified as this is 6a for you if you are answering this answer it this way 6a right and question number 7 a pyq by the way with reference to indian elephants consider the following statements the leader of an elephant group is female do elephants follow the matriarchal system or the patriarchal system okay here is an interesting observation you will always find that uh, uh, it's the female elephant that calls the shot In in an elephant herd, okay, and you'll always find that the erring male, okay, 
is often segregated from the group and I've told you earlier, in certain parts of India it is known as the Makna, which also goes and is roughly translated as the rogue one. Okay, so this is more often than not, almost 100%, it's a male elephant that is thrown out of the herd, okay, if the elephant has so misbehaved, right. So, the leader of an elephant group is female, the maximum gestation period, which means the total num the number of months of pregnancy of an elephant, is it 22 months? An elephant can normally go on calving till the age of 40 years. Among the states in India, the highest elephant population is in Kerala. Which of the statements given above are correct? Okay, UPSC PYQ. You will let me know your answers in the comment box. This is question number 7 for you. Right, if you have any doubts so far, well this is again, once again, where you reach me, my Instagram ID. Do not hesitate, you know, get your doubts cleared ASAP. Do not carry them over to the next day. Okay, okay. My last topic, Agumbe Rainforest Complex ARC. Karnataka, just near Udupi. Okay. One of the most uh, picturesque areas in the whole of India. Okay. The Agumbe Rainforest Complex was thought to get the maximum amount of rainfall in an year when it comes to southern India. Okay. Estimates were again varying. You have various uh, websites and portals that claim various figures. But a consensus is that around 8000 millimeter of rainfall is observed here per year. Okay. Which is again a massive amount for that area. But what is happening is that well with new newer tech you have these rain gorges now that are installed extensively around that part of the western ghats. What does a rain gorge look like? Here it is. A simple thing, you know. Think of it as a beaker with markings in it. You go ahead, install it in the open field where there is no, say, obstruction of the rainfall. Okay. You wait a particular amount of time period that you are researching for. Eventually figure out, Achha pani itna hua, itna barish hua. Simple. That is a rain gorge. So you have rain gorges that are getting installed in this place. Okay. Several other places around. So Nardpal, Mudra, Radi, and all of, all of these uh, areas they are getting their rain gorges installed. Now suddenly this myth is getting challenged that no, no, it is not Agumbe that has the highest amount of rainfall. Other areas around Agumbe are seeing higher rainfall. Okay, why is that? Well, increased percolation of technology. Okay, so Agumbe's rainfall data remains a valuable research. Well, obviously, this is the flagship species that you find there, King Cobra. Okay. This is the natural habitat, by the way, it is claimed for the king cobra, the Agumbe rainforest. Okay. Now, what you are looking at, here is a place that gets monsoonal rainfall, okay. is close to the, say, tropics. So, in terms of Koppen climate classification now, now that you have understood the story, your job is to obviously, I, my job is to complicate matters for you, not just simplify matters for you at times. So, here is a question for you. In terms of Koppen's climate classification, Okay. Now, you must be aware of say A, B, C, D, all of these sub-regional classifications that he's done. Then he's gone ahead and done F, S, M, W, depending on say the type of rainfall that you get, the type of precipitation that you get. So, think for a moment. What would the Koppen's climate classification for Agumbe be? Okay. That is my question for you guys. According to Koppen's climate classification, after the information that I've given you, that it has almost close to 8000 millimeter of rainfall. Okay, and say it is in the Western Ghats. With these two information, my dear student, I ask you to answer me this question. Okay, what would Agumbe's climate classification be? Will it be AM, AF, AS, AW? Again, if you do not know Koppen's climate classification, AM is, well, A is obviously to do with, say, the latitudinal reference. M is to do with monsoonal rainfall. Okay, S is to do with summer dry. W is to do with winter dry. You will let me know your answers. Okay. Do not hesitate. This is how you are going to learn two concepts at once essentially. Okay. Meanwhile, if you haven't so engaged yet, this is the last time I am pitching this to my students by the way. I don't think I will be doing this from tomorrow onwards. But if you like the way I teach, go ahead. My job, my job you do not, don't do anything else just for today. Go ahead and look at how we try to approach solving geography questions of the mains. That a certain mindset needs to be developed if you are going to score heavily in the mains. And that can only be done if you have that knowledge right now, much before you are to go ahead and appear for, uh, prepare for your prelims. Okay. So this is the right time. You know, the strategizing for next year, if any, has to be done now. And the application of that has to done, be done in the months 
that are ahead okay for that you need to have the correct information of how you are going to study for mains okay what should your approach be if you are going to score well in mains because if you score well in mains essentially you give yourself the biggest boost you need for a good service a good cadre and my god a good cadre matters okay so look at this abhishek sir has uh, done for art and culture i have gone ahead and engaged with the geography aspect of it you will find this in the study iq english youtube channel under the live section okay have a look at these is mains 2023 gs1 paper 1 and paper 2 sorry paper 1 discussions okay now the questions from the last class how many questions have we done already what eight nine questions another nine questions await these are the questions of the last class so see 45 50 odd minutes concepts questions concepts questions that's that is the whole purpose of this discussion okay so engage with this share with this your friends if they would find this uh, interesting and well informational okay which of the following parameters are considered in estimating an individual's credit worthiness in the last class we discussed about credit information companies and we also understood what the difference between say sibil and crirf and all of that is okay what is the difference there what is your sibil score how does it go ahead and affect your future all of that was seen in the last class so let's look at it personal information absolutely your name your pan number your date of birth all included here employment information your current employer your past employer your enhanced salary all of your uh, say financial details is available okay payment information absolutely whether you are going ahead and paying your credit card bills on time or are you being uh, a naive and just making the minimum payment if you are doing this well your sibil score is going to be in the red it's not going to be positively affected which is why it is suggested make a substantial part of your credit card payments don't just pay the minimum amount okay fourth inquiry information by lenders absolutely that you have say lenders that can go ahead and check your credit worthiness and that will be a part of the credit worthiness report what does that mean that if your loan application gets rejected because your sibil score was low the next time you go ahead and approach another bank for a loan they are going to know that say another bank rejected your application because your sibil score was not good enough which means they will take an informed decision to based on your current payment capabilities okay so financial discipline financial prudence financial education these are the methods the primary consequences of say credit information companies okay that they want you to be financially responsible okay the more irresponsible you are the more financially you will be at threat at risk in the years to come okay gone are the days of say you know just being uh, very naive when it comes to your loan and your credit card payments so all of them all of them are the correct statements here right identify the incorrect statements the range of an individual's credit worthiness is from 0 to 900 what do you find is it's 300 to 900 for sibil okay and the same thing is for 0 to 900 for crif so in terms of common yes 0 to 900 is a range that i can say repeated applications for loans may lead to rejection of loan applications you cannot go ahead and say apply for 5 6 loans in 5 6 months and then have all of them getting uh, accepted it does not work like that and a direct appeal against an incorrect civil score may be lodged with rbi no you go ahead and engage in the dispute resolution process okay and that lies with the parent body so you go ahead if you have a complaint against civil you will go ahead and complain to civil that they have a mechanism in which you can have your dispute resolution done you cannot go ahead and walk into the rbi chairman's office and ask why was my loan rejected obviously okay so the incorrect statements here being c correct statements a credit score of more than 720 is considered as a good score this is for civil okay in terms of cirf you are looking at a score of around 750 so yes 720 plus is considered a safe score your probability of getting a loan accepted is the highest if you maintain a civil score of 720 plus okay civil and crif have same score ranges but different bands of credit worthiness in fact you have different score ranges okay that civil goes from 300 to 900 crif goes from 0 to 900 okay so incorrect loan eligibility is determined using current salary current emi and credit score absolutely correct which means a and c are my correct statements right incorrect statements medium range weather forecasts now we discussed winds portal didn't we 
in the last class we had discussed wins portal which is being run by the ministry of agri and farmers welfare okay what the whole purpose of this whole portal is that they are going to go ahead and engage in say weather predictions this model for weather predictions for an agriculturist at the block and taluk level okay now what you find is that this entire flow chart has already been in operation by the indian meteorological department under the ministry of earth sciences okay their gramin krishi mausam seva is being done already okay gramin krishi mausam seva implemented by imd correct and then you have a climate hazard and vulnerability atlases from the examination perspective my students the atlases that are published by the government of india have to be looked at okay you unless and until you have also looked at the kind of publications that the government of india makes in terms of geography in terms of environment in terms of forest climate change you need to have a compulsory idea of that so one of those is the climate vulnerability hazard and vulnerability atlas that is published by the moefcc absolutely correct i'll do a, a complete class on this okay the atlases that are published by the government you know so what are the types of atlases because what you find is that back from 1996 up until 29 2009 okay many questions on the atlases of india have been asked previously okay from curiously from 2009 up until now not even a single question has appeared so that is one fact because again you know upsc is also like a crest and a trough so when the questions have to be predicted it's a crest and a trough so certain years you have certain questions that are asked and then they are never asked say for the next 2 3 cycles so why not prepare for it you know give yourself the best chance of scoring well in the prelims so we'll do that meanwhile you'll answer this question for me next identify the correctly matched green alert all okay red alert take action orange alert is be prepared yellow alert is be aware so a and d right dhuadhar falls created by narmada river correct marble rocks correct marble rocks are not found near the gulf of khambat by the way they are just found near just near in fact the dhuadhar falls okay not very far from there okay so khambat falls the gulf of khambat is obviously a long way away from bheda ghat okay so your correct statements here being a and b right this question upsc pyq now here is a thing guys okay what this question asks you to identify is whether you know how to correlate cause and effect when it comes to upsc questions especially geography questions okay a majority of the questions in geography can be fully understood and solved or at least effectively solved if you know how to this how this cause effect relationship works okay now what you have to understand is that the river flows through the west the other rivers flow through the east why okay now this this is a true statement that yes it flows between vindhyas and satpuras correct but is it the reason why the river is going westwards okay why you find that it is going westward is because it flows through a rift valley okay that it is bounded by these two hill ranges has nothing to do with why it is going westwards right so similarly for example here is say your indus river here is your brahmaputra river they all turn inwards towards india why because of syntaxial bend correct this is what we know as say they turn inwards towards india because of syntaxial bend but Himalayas being fold mountains does it have anything to do with why the rivers turn inwards no yes himalayas are a fold mountain it's a factually correct statement but that statement has nothing to do with why my indus river and my brahmaputra river are turning inwards towards india rather than say flowing away like say the yellow river or the mekong or whatever correct so you have to understand that you have to understand that the cause effect relationship has to be absolutely clear if you are looking to solve questions some are directly related some are just mere facts that are put in the question to essentially go ahead and you know confuse you don't get confused which is why concepts have to be clear if your concepts are clear this question shouldn't be a problem okay so the correct statement here being a only right okay so these are my good individuals my uh, star individuals ulfat harshit pooja ajay kalyan gopesh mandeep vaishnavi akhil lekam crystal harshit neeraja coder your neighbor rahul abhishek akshay aditya frown clown i still don't understand why these individuals don't send me answers on youtube okay maybe they are the shy ones it's okay 
doesn't matter as long as you're willing to engage and learn that's all i want and to the rest of you thank you so much you know i'm happy to see some repeat names who have now started getting uh, you know they are regular in their responses the rest of you those who are watching me live and those who will be watching this in the course of the day i have introduced what close to around 8 9 questions today answer them you know it will not take you more than what 10 minutes but that 10 minutes per day will help you you know increase your level of proficiency in a particular subject current affairs is not something that you can master overnight okay take it from me it's been 10 years i have been doing this and i still don't consider my current affairs to be updated okay so you have to do this to the rest of you continue doing this okay i hope to see many more responses you know the dream is that one day this entire page should be filled up with students that this font level should be 8 abhi to 12 13 pe karta hu main okay that that day should come where i have all the students who are engaging with the questions right my friends that concludes today's discussion you will find the pdf of this entire lecture uploaded at around say after afternoon okay till then go ahead have a look at the questions do your studies more importantly have a productive day okay september is coming to an end there is no time to waste now right and engage with me every morning 6:30 to 7:30 as we take a look at the topics that matter and more importantly the questions that come out of it right thank you so much guys before i sign off once again i'll request you please do consider leaving me a like if you like something about this lecture ek comment likh do theek hai bande ka dil khush ho jayega and uh, answer the questions more importantly forget the likes and the comments that is again just a personal request here is an instruction <laughs> go ahead and answer the questions theek hai till i see you tomorrow morning 6:30 am with another set of topics and another set of questions have a productive day my friends bye